going on everybody hope you've been well i know it's been a little while i'm gonna try to bring you a little video here of um last week i changed out a compressor for a walk-in cooler um a one horse little one you know one horse copeland semi-hermetic um the issue was is that it was seized up so while i have it here i'm gonna try to pull it apart and see if we can look into it and see what maybe happened i think you guys might enjoy this so here so what we go, i'm gonna boys. start with first i'm just gonna pull the head off here to use my new Milwaukee 3 8 stubby half inch socket. We're just gonna put them on here and blast out all the bolts. We'll do all that and then um, I'll get back to you when the head's off. So I got the head off here, guys. Um, valves look good. They're not damaged or cracked or anything, but that wasn't the issue anyway. The issue I was having was that it was seized up and I cannot push these pistons to get them to move. Normally you can push them with your hand and they'll go up and down as they're supposed to these things will not move so it's seized up somehow i'm gonna open up the back here and we're gonna take a look in there next all right guys so i got the back off be the impeller and everything for your oil and all that but i just wanted to show you this quick while i'm draining some of the oil into my pan here see how that oil's green it's got like a greenish tint to it that's obviously because this compressor has been out and i've had the caps on but it's gotten moisture in it poe oil if it gets a bunch of moisture at times it can turn that greenish color just thought i would uh, bring that up if you guys never seen that before right, guys so i got the back off obviously i drained out some of the oil if you've never seen it this is I'm trying to shine a light in here this is what the inside of a crankcase will look like on some of these this is the little ones, obviously a bigger compressor may have more. You know, this is the bottom of our pan, you know, crankcase. Everything looks decent in there. There's our pistons and our piston rods and everything. Um, and this was stuck. But now if you look, I can turn this. That crankshaft is turning and you can see how it's pumping your pistons up. So it is like a car engine. It's supposed to go up and down like that. But this was stuck. And also in here, there is some black, if you can see, that was in the oil and it smells. It smells like a burnout, but not a full burnout. So I know this was seized and um, drawing high amps. I want to pull open the front because I believe it's, you know, the electric motor that was seized up in here. So we're going to pull the front off and take a look in there next. All right, guys. So here we are. If you've never seen these, here's your electric motor windings right from your wires up on the top gets power electric motor and turns turns your crankshaft to start pumping see how this is getting this is all black nasty in there with the oil like it's burning up so this was, this happened to be that the motor um, was blowing some fuses or was really over amping and would go out on overload and the motor was seized because it wouldn't spin. And I think I see the issue. If you look right here on the windings there, this is all, see how that's broken up and damaged? Here's part of your damage um, on your motor windings here. They were causing this to over ramp. Everything, it's gotta be, that's the bad spot right there. It's all pretty cool because I usually never pull these apart, but can see the black and yeah and it stinks it wasn't a full burnout because it seized up first but this is what happens the over ramps gets too hot and it starts cooking your oil and that's why they call it a burnout and that looks like the issue starting right there with the motor so pretty cool i'm gonna put it back together because we gotta bring this back for a core return real quick just messing around with it a little more I just if this will focus see that winding was broken off in here where it's all gummed up and burnt. That was that problem right there, guys. Well, guys, there we are. So I figured um, you know, some of you might find that kind of cool. And those of you that maybe haven't seen the inside of like um, a Copeland compressor yet, um, very easy to take apart. You know, so that's going to go back to the factory for a core return. And that's what they're, they're going to rebuild it all, you know, and have it back out. You know, so 
like I said, you don't really get to do it much. You know, you do the compressors, you turn them back in, and that's it. But it's nice sometimes if you have time to tear them apart and kind of dig into it yourself and see, you know, what caused it to die. So, like I said, you could get into it a lot more. And, you know, I've taken a few Copeland classes over the years, like compressor teardown classes and stuff. Um, they're actually pretty cool. They're usually like a day long, you know, and I remember one of the instructors sometimes, one time actually encouraged us, like, you know, feel free to, you know, take the compressors apart and look at them and everything else and try to see what happened because once they go back to the factory, they're getting all ripped down and taken apart anyway. So um, this is also why the, um, I'm doing this here in the van. I can't really film much in the field like I've mentioned before. That's why there hasn't been many videos up, guys, but I still appreciate all the new subscribers and comments and all those of you that have still been here. So feel free to like and subscribe if you're new and Thank you guys for everything. I'll catch you boys in the next one.